This is Thessaloniki, a restless port city, ships, horns, and a sea that has seen empires rise and fall. But only 35 minutes from here, hidden in the limestone slopes of Mount Katsika, lies something far older than history itself, a place that may hold the face of Europe's first human. Petrolona is a small village in the heart of Halkidiki, perched above the Cassandra Peninsula. After the Asia Minor catastrophe in 1923, when around 1.6 million people were forcibly exchanged between Greece and Turkey, refugees from Pontus settled here. One of the biggest challenges they faced in their new home was the lack of water in the village. In the winter of 1959, a local shepherd named Philippos Chatsaridis went searching for water. Snow had covered the hills, and near his village of Petrolona, he noticed something strange. The snow melted faster around a small hole in the rock, and from inside came a faint hissing sound. He thought maybe there's a spring below, he called his neighbors. Together, they dug through the frozen earth, widening the narrow cleft. What they found was not water, but darkness, a descending void. Two villagers were lowered by rope. Their lamps flickered on walls glittering with crystal formations, stalactites and stalagmites, reaching like teeth of some sleeping giant. They had entered one of Greece's richest caves, a labyrinth of chambers nearly a thousand feet long. A year later, another villager, Christos Sorianidis explored a small side chamber. There, half buried and fused to the stone wall, he saw something that would shake archaeology for decades. A human skull, coated in brown calcite, missing its jaw, as if nature itself had sealed it in a tomb of minerals. It became known as the Petrolona skull, or the Archanthropus of Petrolona a relic whose age and origin remain among the greatest puzzles of human evolution. As scientists began to excavate, they uncovered more than bones. The cave walls were lined with the history of entire ecosystems. Remains of cave bears, hyenas, deer, horses, ibex, even birds and reptiles, over 50 species in total. Some bones carried the marks of stone tools, cuts, fractures, evidence that early humans once hunted and dined here, deep within the flicker of firelight. The cave became a time capsule of the Paleolithic world, and in later millennia, perhaps 5,000 to 8,000 years ago, early Neolithic farmers returned, burying their dead in ritual. These were the first settlers who would lay the foundations of what we now call classical Greece. When researchers examined the skull, they were divided. Its features didn't fit neatly into any known species. The heavy brow ridge resembled Homo erectus, yet inside, its large cranial vault hinted at something more advanced, closer to Homo heidelbergensis, or even early Homo sapiens. Its brow was thick but hollow, a structure filled with frontal sinuses, perhaps improving breathing or smell maybe helping with body heat regulation. Some said it looked eerily similar to the Cabway skull found in Zambia, as if these beings once roamed far beyond the borders we imagine. The problem was, how old was it? Dating attempts ranged from 150,000 to 300,000 years. 
But Greek anthropologist Aris Poulianos went further. He believed the skull was 700,000 years old, making it the oldest European human ever found, predating the out-of-Africa migration model itself. Aris Poulianos wasn't just another scientist. He was a member of the Greek resistance during World War II, fighting against the Axis occupation. In the years that followed, he became known not only as an anthropologist, but also as a political activist. In Palestine. A man who believed deeply in truth, independence, and the strength of human origins, whether cultural or biological. He gathered 40 students from Athens and began systematic excavations, funding much of the work with his own savings, even his father's money. To him, Petrolona wasn't just a cave. It was proof that humans had evolved locally in Europe, a direct challenge to the dominant narrative of African origin. But bold ideas rarely travel smoothly. Greek authorities clashed with him. Access to the site was restricted, excavations halted. By the 1980s and 90s, the cave became the center of legal battles, its doors closed to both Pulianos and much of the public. He claimed he was silenced, that his findings were suppressed by Western science because they didn't fit the accepted story. Today, the skull is kept in the Archaeological Museum of Thessaloniki, away from public display, a relic surrounded by controversy and unanswered questions. Thousands of fossils still lie under the stalactites of Petrolona. Somewhere in those layers of clay and calcite may rest the missing link between Europe's first hunters and the civilizations that would follow. Each discovery here tells of survival, bears hibernating in the cold, hyenas dragging prey into the darkness, and humans learning to control fire, to carve tools, to remember the dead. This cave is not just an archeological site, it's a mirror of our origins. A reminder that the line between myth and science is often carved in stone. When you walk through Petrolona today, the air feels still yet alive with whispers of the past. Every echo carries a question older than history itself. Where do we come from? Was the first European human born here, beneath the mountains of Chalkidiki? Or did he wander in from Africa, guided by instinct and stars? We may never know, but in the flicker of cave light, you sense something deeper that truth and mystery often coexist, side by side, like stalactite and stalagmite, slowly growing toward one another through the silence of time. <laughs>